Greetings. Recently, System 2x6 games are being added on the Techno Parrot list of playable titles. Preferably, this short tutorial will be for AMD and NVIDIA users. For this demonstration, we will do the test on a Ryzen 5 with a 32GB of RAM and RTX 3056 gigabyte video card. I spent all day fiddling with all possible configurations for the System 2x6 titles. This was the hardest to configure on my machine. Almost blew my hair off. It's crazy, right? How I envy Intel users right now. They say Intel users has a better luck running these titles. But anyway, we have to try for the sake of emulation. After a long back and forth, I came with the best thing for my setup. It's not perfect, but it will do for now. Today we will fix Cobra Arcade running like this to run a bit better like this. So, if you have similar issue, then this video is for you. But before we start, a little disclaimer. There is no guarantee that it will work the same way on your machine. Your experience may vary. First, you need to get the necessary files needed before we start this short tutorial. And please don't ask me where to get the game files. Just be creative on your search on the internet. It's quite easy to find. Okay, and one more thing. This tutorial may or may not work to all System 2x6 titles on the Techno Parrot list. So, you have to test it yourself. Now that's out of the way, let's get started. As a recommendation, upon testing, we copied our emulator and game files into an SSD as a working directory to have better results. So, if we mess up now, we don't mess the other game setup for Play Emulator and Techno Parrot. Just being careful. First, we need to configure the Play Emulator that can be found in the root directory of the Techno Parrot folder. Next, run Play Emulator manually by double clicking the Play Executable. The user interface will pop up immediately. Next, click on the Options tab. A drop down menu will appear, then choose Settings. A small window will pop up. Now click on the General tab, tick the Cap Frame Rate settings, and leave the other settings untick. Then go to Video, untick Enable GS RAM Reads, and tick Force Bilinear Filtering on. GS Handler should be Vulkan on both Play Emulator and Techno Parrot user settings. The resolution settings here will be overwritten by the resolution settings on the Techno Parrot user settings. But we will get to that later. Next is the audio. On my experience, this will have a sweet spot depending on the machine. In this demonstration, we put the value of 54 as buffer size settings. As a reminder that you can also experiment on the settings if it does not work well on yours. After you're done, close everything. Now let's run the game. But first, let's add the game on Techno Parrot. Let's boot Techno Parrot. At the main list, scroll down for Cobra Arcade. You can press letter C on the keyboard to immediately jump to the first title that start with the letter C. If you did not see the game, you may want to update first. To do that, click on the three dash line on the upper left most corner. Click check for updates or install updates if it's available. After you're done updating, click again the three dash line and click add game. Scroll down for Cobra Arcade, then click add game. Now the game is available for configurations. Click on game settings. Then redirect the game executable by clicking just above the gray line. A pop-up window will show up immediately. Check the bottom right corner for the exact file name that you will be looking for. In this case, it's cabreta.zip. Then go to your game directory. Then choose the file needed. You won't get wrong on this part. Techno Parrot won't allow you choose the wrong file unless you force it. As an additional reminder, the cabreta.zip should have its respective CHD file or files on the same directory. Main file standards usually come in pairs. The Cabreta zip file and folder with same name that contain the CHD file or files. It will not work without the CHD file. Clear enough? Okay. Next, configure general. Input API whether X input, direct input or raw input, depending on what you're using. In this demonstration, it's best to use a mouse and keyboard option, so we choose raw input. On general display mode, it's up to you, but we recommend full screen. Now in the general graphics backend, depending on your machine, you can experiment on this. Try both to find which is better. In this demo, we will set this up on Vulkan at 480p resolution. Feel free to experiment on this if it doesn't show good results. Then hit save if you're fine with the settings. 
you can go back and adjust later. Then let's configure the control button assignment. So, depending on what you use, you can freely manage the button's assignments to your perspective. On the player one light gun, choose Windows mouse cursor. Don't forget to save before exiting. Now you can test your game. Like we said earlier, it's not a guarantee it will work on our settings. You might end up fiddling with the settings too like we did. We wish you good luck on that. We hope a better update will come out soon for the Play Emulator. I know so many are eager to play these titles on their arcade cabinets. If you made it here this part of the video, thank you for watching. And if this video is helpful, might as well like and subscribe. And if you want to help us grow our channel, join us on Patreon. Very appreciated. Have a great day. ここに君の妹が捕らわれているんだな。そうよ。私はうまくギルドの手を逃れたけど、キャサリンは何心配ないか。俺は必ず助け出してやる。ね、容量の良いこと。いいさ。遅くから早く打ち合う羽目になるん